Hey guys, it's Minka from HopeKiwi.com. Welcome after a short break. We've been pretty busy with some other projects on the way, but we are coming back with the videos about Australia, visas, processes, uh, migration, all kind of information that you might need if you are thinking of moving um, to Australia. And today I'm gonna tell you about 10 things that uh, surprised me in Australia when I uh, came here for the first time. So, okay, let's get into it. Number one, and uh, number one, uh, it's uh, prices. Prices of berries, strawberries, and basically all kind of berries. Berries are super expensive comparing to, um, for example, my country, Poland, when we have plenty of different types of berries and you can even go to the forest and just pick them from the forest and um, that's it. But here, uh, to get a really tiny uh, box of, um, let's say, raspberries, you're gonna pay around $5, $6, sometimes even $7. So uh, it was a little bit of a shock to me because I love berries and um, when I uh, just checked the prices, I was like, mm, mm, okay, that's not gonna work. Number two, spiders. <gasps> All those spiders that I don't know, all the medias, all over internet, we have those informations about spiders in Australia, everywhere, they're gonna kill you, they're small, they're deadly, they're awful, disgusting. But to be honest, um, I've been living here over three years and uh, yes, there are spiders around, especially here in Queensland, um, but they are not, you know, one meter big, at least I was not lucky to see uh, that big one. Uh, there's plenty of small ones, especially in the house, um, in the corners, but they're not really, you know, dangerous, they're just even small flies. You need to be especially in tropical part of Australia. If you're gonna go to Melbourne, like, after two years in Melbourne, um, there was maybe basically one spider in a city that was, like, walking over my shoulder, and that's it. Disgusting, but it was just a one story. Number three. Kangaroos. Kangaroos that you see on the commercials, hopping around everywhere. You go to Australia and they are literally gonna jump on you straight from the airplane. Um, not exactly my experience, um, to be honest. Uh, my first kangaroo I spotted, it was after four months being here in Melbourne and I had to go to the golf course to actually uh, see them. It's not that easy. To be honest, I found it much easier to find the kangaroo in the supermarket because they eat kangaroos here. So that was my first kangaroo, actually, the kangaroo sausages. Um, and the second was a dead kangaroo next to the road. So um, it's not exactly that, that easy to see them, especially if you are in the big cities like um, Melbourne or Sydney um, or Brisbane, you need to go a little bit outside the city or go to the golf courses because there's a big chance that you're gonna find them over there. Number four. Number four, it's um, sex in the hostels. Yes, I know, sounds weird, sounds a little bit disgusting. Uh, but yes, that's actually, it's happening. It happened not to me, but to my friend. Uh, she stayed in the hostel with six other people and, um, and there was a couple on the bunk bed um, having um, sex. And for the first time, no one really say anything, but the second night, one of other um, guys said, you know, guys, can you just go maybe outside? Um, and from what I check, it's actually um, quite common. Maybe not, it's, it's not something that, you know, every single time you go to a hostel, you're gonna encounter that kind of situation. But um, yes, especially if you're gonna go up north when I was living in Port Douglas, it's a very hippie vibe. There's um, lots of uh, Latin people. Um, there's lots of as well European looking for fun and um, adventure. So yeah, it might be like that. So. I'm not saying that it's wrong, I'm just saying that it can be sometimes annoying for other people in the room uh, if you are a little bit too loud, uh, but um, yeah, I don't have a big problem with that. And number five, speed limits. Speed limits here are a little bit weird, so um, on the highways, as much as you can go, it's 110 kilometers per hour. Um, 
which is like okay i understand that they have all the animals the kangaroos can hop on the on the road and they can kill you and you can kill a kangaroo however uh, you know some highways are really massive they might have like five lines on one direction and you still have 110 uh, but then sometimes on some country road you're gonna have 100 kilometers per hour uh, when it's just a one line, it's very tiny, lots of curves and still lots of kangaroos around and wildlife and you can still go 100. So it's a little bit like weird. Like I'm from Europe and uh, in Poland we have speed limits on the highways, like 120. But if you go to Germany, they don't really have speed limits and that's uh, what I'm more used to it, like if used to. When, you know, the road is okay and they have animals as well um you can drive talking about speed limits you need to be very careful because the fines here are massive you know if you're gonna just go more than 10 or 15 kilometers per hour more you can pay something around 300 or 400 dollars um so it's quite a lot of money so just be careful if you know if, if um if you don't need to speed don't speed number six um, Employee-employer relation. Um, depend what kind of company and industry, but what I found very interesting and completely different from my country is that um, those relations between uh, employee and employer are usually very, um, I would say, friendly and flexible. And in some companies, even like in my company, on Friday we have something um, called a casual Friday and then 4 p.m. Uh, we open a bar and there's beer, there's alcohol, there's wine and everyone can go and just drink even though we're still working we still, you know, we need to do our job uh, so this is, uh, this is something surprising, something that I don't really know from my country but in general, yeah, that kind of relation between uh, employee and employer uh, is very relaxed um, in most of situation that's what i found you can go to your boss you can say like you know and this and this and um no one is gonna be talking uh, to you like you are so small and not important um so that's something really nice something a bit different um from what i know from poland and number seven seven is customer service customer service in australia um it's pretty good I'm not saying that they're gonna solve all your problems because um, they won't but at least they are trying and they are making effort to look like they are trying to help you uh, so that's something really nice I not again not in every single company because sometimes you can call customer service um, especially insurances when you're gonna call your insurance uh, they're usually gonna just answer to awards and just hang out with you uh, that's what happened <laughs> very often to me but in most uh, other cases, uh, customer service is really nice, especially in the restaurants and, and, and bars and cafes. The people are going to be very attending, very talkative. Um, they will, you know, um, come to you when usually you have a mouth full of food and ask you, oh, do you like it? How is it? Da, 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 da. And um, <laughs> so, but yeah, customer service is something, something uh, on a high level here comparing um, to I think a European customer service don't want to say all European but uh, Polish customer service is really bad comparing to the customer service that um, you can get here in Australia however my husband is from Mexico and he said that this customer service in Australia it's nothing comparing to Mexico so um, you know I'm wondering how good is the customer service in Mexico we will check soon Number eight, weather. So weather in Australia can be quite unpredictable. Uh, for sure, you've heard about uh, bushfires um, two years ago. Uh, it's not exactly that the whole Australia was on fire, but um, yeah, the big amount of uh, Victoria and New South Wales was actually burning and South Australia. Um, but yeah, the weather here can be quite crazy. Um, we have a snow in Australia, you might not know about it, but uh, in Victoria, in Tasmania uh, and in New South Wales, um, the weather can be really, really crazy. Uh, there's even ski resorts over there and in winter it can be, can be very, very cold. And because houses, they don't really have isolations, they, um, you know, you're gonna basically freeze inside your house. 
Um, so yeah, the weather can be crazy. The same, uh, we have uh, hurricanes and uh, massive swells. So it's like, like a massive wa waves uh, that can sometimes just wash away the coast and the beaches. That's what happened a few months ago um, in By Byron Bay. There was some massive swells and they um, washed a very beautiful beach um, that we were lucky to uh, to visit a few days before. Um, so yeah, the weather, weather can be crazy. And especially if you're gonna go to Melbourne, uh, they say that there's four seasons in one day and that's absolutely true. Uh, in the morning, you can have 15 degrees, you're gonna freeze. Uh, afternoon, you can have 35 and you're gonna be sweating in your clothes. So um, you always need to wear flip-flops with you and umbrella. Number nine. Um, nine is something funny, something that uh, <laughs> uh, that I think is very popular as well in England. So you you're gonna have uh, two separate taps uh, uh, on the sink with a hot and a cold water. Not everywhere, obviously. It's uh, in old buildings, um, especially. Uh, but in in new buildings, new architecture, no. They have a mixer, so that's perfect. But sometimes if you're going to go to the old buildings, you're going to have that cold and, and uh, hot water. And the cold water is really cold. It's a few, basically your eyes are, your hands are freezing. And the hot water is basically boiling. So you need to like very quickly just burn your hands and then cold burn, cold. Um, I don't know why is that. It's just funny, just surprising. Uh, I've never seen anything like that in my country, uh, so yeah. And the last one, number 10. Uh, number 10 is a lack of isolation. Isolation in, inside the house. So the houses don't really have any isolation. They don't have double glazed windows. This is something surprising because I come from Poland. So in Poland, we have very thick walls. They're actually made from bricks and we have a very thick isolation. So our walls, they might be something like that thick. And then we have a double glazed windows. Uh, and then we have a central heating. So in winter, uh, it, it never really gets cold inside the house. But here, even though in winter they still have snow in some parts of Australia, uh, it still can get minus two, minus five degrees. Uh, there's no isolation whatsoever. So uh, if you're gonna move to Melbourne, inside your house, you can sometimes uh, get 15 degrees. So imagine you are entering your house and you're basically freezing the same like you would be still outside. Um, this was something shocking um, to me, something a little bit, I would say, um, surprising and I still don't know why they can't just do isolation uh, around the houses so in winter they're not freezing. Lots of my Australian friends in winter they're posting pictures from their houses sitting in their winter jackets, scarves and hats and uh, for me it's just a really cool view to see something like that to be uh, you know fully dressed inside the house and um, Personally, I hate it because I hate to be cold inside the house. Um, so I wish one day Australia will come to the senses and perhaps start isolating their houses. If you don't know how to do it, bring Polish people. We're gonna teach you how to isolate the house and be warm and cozy and nice. Anyway, guys, <laughs> that's all the 10 things that um, surprised me in Australia when I first came here. It's not that surprising anymore. However, every day um, there's something new that I learn about this country. Please tell me if some of those things they were new um, to you or perhaps you already uh, already uh, knew about all those weird stuff about Australia or perhaps those things are exactly the same like in your country just leave the comment below and let me know I'm very um, interested to to know um, what is your opinion and there's more upcoming videos uh, we just apply for a postgraduate visa so uh, hopefully in a few weeks uh, maybe a few months we're gonna get the respond on that visa and then we can uh, make a video for you. Meanwhile, we're going to be preparing videos on um, living in Australia, cost of living on the Gold Coast and comparison between uh, cost of living on the Gold Coast and Melbourne and a few other upcoming videos. Uh, so yeah, stay with us. 
If you like this video, consider subscribing. There's gonna be more upcoming videos. There's already uh, more videos you can check it out. Uh, there's videos on, about student visa and studying in Australia, about benefits um, of studying in Australia, uh, what you need to do and what you need to know before actually applying for student visa. Uh, there's lots of other videos. There's some small travel videos as well if uh, you want to just see um, around. So yeah, just browse the channel and hopefully you're going to find something interesting. And yeah, smash that subscribe button and thumbs up and see you next time.